Hello friends and welcome. This is Britt and today we'll be doing my November reading journal setup. Before we get into things with that though, I'd just like to remind you that it, we're in the middle of Inktober right now, which is a drawing challenge where you draw a picture every day related to a prompt. If you'd like to see my drawings for Inktober, I have made an Inktober playlist with all the shorts here on YouTube, so I'll link that in the description. Or if you'd like to see the still shots, I will also put up on the screen now my art Instagram uh, handle so that you can check it out there if you want to. So today we'll be using a different medium than I've used before in my journal and I'm using colored pencils here. And this is something that I have recently gotten more into because I've been practicing art more frequently and I find the colored pencils are pretty easy to get used to and to start using, but they do take a very long time because you need to do many, many thin layers on top of each other to get the different colors and the blending. So that's what you'll be seeing me doing here. I've started practicing drawing portraits more lately, and I find that the colored pencils are pretty nice, uh, comfortable way of doing that for a beginner. And you can see here that I decided on pomegranates for the theme. They have some nice red colors and it's a fruit that's seasonal right now for the winter time, at least where I live in the Northern Hemisphere. And I actually did a pomegranate theme last year in my December journal setup, and I did not like it. It did not go very well. So this is kind of my redo of that. As you may have seen at the very beginning, I did do a pencil sketch, a very simple pencil sketch off screen at the very beginning, and then erased most of it so it was very light. And now I'm going in with that structure and doing all my coloring. And I am looking at a reference photo from Unsplash on my computer screen while I'm doing this so I can see where all the shadows and highlights and things are at. And working with these colored pencils was very meditative for me since it takes so long and you're kind of just doing a repetitive motion a lot and just very slowly building things up in different areas and then checking the photo and then repeating. Now I'm starting in with this purplish blue color that I chose for the shadows just to kind of start to put in some areas where there will be shadow in this picture. And as with the color, the other colors, I will also come back and forth with that and use it several times in several layers. I like to use purples, pinks, and blues as my shadows a lot of the time. Um, I like to use a little bit of an exaggerated color palette for that type of thing, just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. And I'm also coming in with a little bit of yellow here on the highlights with with some warm light hitting this pomegranate but also the pomegranate itself does have a little bit of yellow tone in it as well. I'm using kind of a looser style with this drawing so I don't mind that everything's not blended all the way in and you can kind of see the strokes or the marks from the pencil. That's totally fine. For me, I'm kind of going for that more um, stylized effect. If I wanted to make this more photorealistic and everything be really nicely blended together, that would take weeks probably, so I don't have that kind of time to spend in my journal specifically. So, But I actually do really like the look of this looser style anyway. Right here, I'm adding some red into this shadow. That's the shadow onto the table of the surface where the pomegranate is sitting. And that's because the light 
in the environment will bounce off of the object and also be included in the shadow sometimes. And so the color from the object will usually be seen in the shadow as well. So adding just a little bit of that color into the shadow will make it a little bit more realistic. Now I'm moving on to the half, uh, half pomegranate that's cut open that's sitting over here. And the process is going to pretty much be the same for these pomegranates. So I'm just going to stop talking for a little bit and let you guys listen to the relaxing music while you watch.
After I finished the main drawing of the pomegranates, I thought that this composition was missing something and it would be nice to have a little bit of green as a complementary color to the red. And so I looked up a different picture of what the pomegranate leaves look like. And because this was not part of the original photo that I was using as a reference, I did not have a good idea of how the shadows would be on this one. I had to guess at it because all the photos that I found were of the branches on the actual tree, not a branch that was laying on a table. So um, you'll see that I do struggle a little bit with the shadows on this one. And, you know, frankly, I was kind of tired at this point. It had already been probably a couple of hours working on everything else on this spread, so I was rushing through it a little bit. I probably could have got it if I had chosen to spend a little bit more time on it, but you know, you gotta be, you gotta work with where you're at. And I was tired and I didn't want to spend that much time on it, so that's what I chose to do. And you'll see in a little bit here, I decided that I needed to bring some of the red from the pomegranates into it to make it a little bit more cohesive. So I do add a little bit of some reddish shading into these leaves as well. And for the finishing touches on this part of the spread, I'm just going in and darkening up that red color, making it a little more saturated, make it a little bit bolder. Oh, and here I am adding that red to the leaves. So just standing back, looking at it and seeing as a whole where could it use a little bit more saturation. And for the rest of this spread, I wanted it to be pretty simple because we have this complicated drawing already that's taking up most of the focus. So I just put a little bit of craft paper on the top and the bottom. This brown color goes nicely with the other colors that I've already used. And then I added a couple of little pomegranate seeds around just to fill in some of the space and pull everything together on the two pages. And then you'll see to the right hand side I have my calendar, a vertical style calendar, and that's where I will write down the days that I read each of the books in November. That little other half, that extra space that's on the right hand page will be where I put the book covers, and then I'll just put the November title at the top of the left hand page using a marker. And I am just now realizing while I'm doing this voiceover that I did not make a space to put my statistics for the month of November. I was trying to consolidate things down to use a little bit less space because I have been reading fewer books than I was reading in the beginning of the year and so I didn't need as much space for all the book covers printed out but Maybe I'll be able to fit the statistics and the book covers in that space on the right page. We'll just have to see at the end of November when I do the wrap up. And here I am using a brush pen and I've been practicing my script writing a little bit. So I'm starting to get the hang of it. And I just did it on this little piece of graph paper, colored graph paper, just so it stands out a little bit from the rest of the background. And that's the first spread completed. And we'll only be doing the two spreads 
today since, like I said, I consolidated that first one. So this will be the place where I write my book reviews. And another thing that I changed is that previously I had been putting six boxes on this spread, so there would be room for six book reviews. And as I mentioned, I haven't been reading as much as I was reading in the beginning of the year. In the beginning of the year I was reading like 15-ish books per month, and now I'm reading like four or five books a month. So I don't need to preserve space as much as I was before, so I just changed it to four here. And if I read five, I'll just cram two of them in into one box together. That'll be fine. And as you saw, I just added some more craft paper to the corners like I did in the first spread. And here I am not very carefully drawing another branch and I'm kind of disgusted with these branches at this point, so <laughs> I'm just doing it quickly. And then I will move on to doing some pomegranates right here, the bottom right hand side. And I spend a little bit more time on these guys because I'm more comfortable with this. <laughs> and I, I feel like it's important to talk about the mental process of doing art because it can be really frustrating sometimes for anybody and you, even if you're very skilled and you have a ton of experience and you're a professional things are still not going to go how you want it to go sometimes so you know it's i think it's good that we express that in the videos as we go along too just so that you see that it's okay if you feel that way it just keep going keep working on it and if it doesn't turn out 100% how you wanted to it that's totally fine you know don't dwell on it just continue your practice and keep going and if you practice every day or as often as you can it'll improve you don't need to worry about it and you may have noticed that this is a lot more zoomed in than it was on the first page where I was drawing the pomegranates so this is just down in the little corner of these pages so this is a lot smaller and so I can't really get much detail in on these guys you can see how big the pencil nib <laughs> looks in comparison to this picture so it's a little bit less uh, detailed but I did it in the exact same way and you know, the layers and the colors are the same as I did on the first page Just a small announcement, from now until the end of this year, I will be putting out one to two videos every week. Since we're getting close to the end of the year, I will have my flip throughs of my completed bullet journal and my completed reading journal in December, as well as the setups for the new 2025 bullet journal and reading journal as well. So if you want to see a schedule of the upcoming videos for the next month and a half or so, you can check that out on the community tab. And to finish this page up, I'm just doing some kind of freehand-ish boxes here. And you may have seen in some of my other setups, I like that sort of squiggly look. I kind of stopped using a ruler for a lot of things a couple months ago, and I decided that I kind of like this more organic looking line and I'm okay with it not being 100% correct. And then I like to come in with another smaller pen and make it even more squiggly. And I really enjoy how that looks. So that's what I'm doing here. And as I mentioned, this will be where I'll write my little short book reviews for the month. 
And that pretty much wraps things up for my November reading journal setup. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found it relaxing and a little bit meditative to watch. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy this colored pencil style of illustration. I think I like it. I'll probably use it again in the future sometime. As always, please take care of yourself. Do something creative and have a time to let your mind relax a little bit and unwind. Don't forget to drink your water and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.